Okay. All right. So welcome back to the Branding Boot Camp. And this was a four-day workshop. This is day four of four. And if you haven't already, go ahead and download the workbook. You can get that from communityinfluencer.com slash workbook to grab your copy. And if you're tuning into the replay, you should see a copy of the workbook somewhere on the page. Just go ahead and scroll down and look around. But first, if you're new here, my name is Erin Chung and I teach real estate agents how to get more leads, clients and referrals so that they can grow their businesses to seven figures and beyond. And I do this through my signature program called the Community Influencer Academy. It's the largest online community for real estate agents in the world. Today we're covering workshop four, which is designed to sell. So this is how design makes you money, the currency of color, how color connects, communicates, and converts, how to pick the perfect color palette for your brand, and how to pick the, the perfect font pairing for your brand as well. We're also going to cover how fonts and copy, um, how fonts can make your copy even more compelling. All right. So if you are tuning in for the first time, I do want to let you know that I'm going to leave time at the end to answer questions. But if you want to take a deeper dive into any of the things that I covered today, they're all covered in my new book, The Real Real Estate Agent. And thanks to amazing people like you, it did debut this week as the number one bestseller in five different categories on Amazon. Some of those categories were categories we weren't even planning on hitting number one in, and we did it anyway. So I want to say thank you. It's currently the number one real estate book in the country, and that's all because of people like you. So thank you so much. When the workshop ends, if you want to learn more about the book, just go to communityinfluencer.com slash book to grab your copy. And anyone that does is also going to get a special complimentary VIP bonus for doing so. And I'll speak more about this at the end of the workshop. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. A lot of people don't know this about me, but I am an artist. So my last summer at USC, so I went to the University of Southern California, it required an oil painting class and I've been creating art as a hobby ever since. But before I was even allowed to pick up a brush, my professor forced us to learn color theory. And it was really annoying at the time, <laughs> but I had no idea that that skill would be so valuable for me down the road. Paul Rand once said, design is the silent ambassador of your brand, and I could not agree more. So let's talk about color currency, the currency of color. Artists and designers know that design sells super well. And you know this because companies like Starbucks became famous because of their iconic green straw. Apple's white headphones stood out in a sea of boring black headphones. Fast food chains use the colors red, green, and yellow to make you hungry. Yes, color can make you hungry. And every day, brands use color to silently connect, communicate, and convert. And that's why I am so passionate about designing to sell. They basically just use design to make money, and you can do the same. Color theory, which is what I learned in college, so color theory is the psychology of color. Artists use color theory to activate different areas of the brain. And this is where it gets really interesting. So this is the color wheel. Isaac Newton, in fact, the father of modern color theory and lots of other things, invented the color wheel in 1666. He noted that all of the colors visible to the human eye, then he mapped them all out on a wheel to show their relationships. The first relationship is based on temperature. So warm colors are comprised of red, orange, and yellow, while cool colors are comprised of blue, green, and purple. So warm colors communicate energy, warmth, passion. Cool colors communicate serenity, calmness, and stability. I'm always drawn to the right side of the color wheel because I love warm colors. And when I picked my brand colors, I knew that orange had to be on the list. But what temperature are you naturally drawn to? So once you know, it's a lot easier to decide which colors would be a good representation of your brand. And if you have a little trouble, there's a quick tip. Just take a trip to your closet and whatever, step back and look at all of your clothes at once. And what will happen is you'll see a majority of one color. 
that's the color that you're most drawn to because that's the one that you always buy. Let's talk about primary colors. So primary colors are the building blocks of every single other color in the color wheel. So what this means is that if you only had three colors to paint with, and we've done this as an exercise, like if you are painting in oils or in watercolor or in pastels or any other medium, your professor, your teacher might only give you three colors. And what this means is that you could mix these three colors into different color combinations. And when you do, you can literally create every single other color in the spectrum besides black and white, but those are not colors, those are shades. So if someone gives you yellow, blue, and red, you can make every color in the rainbow based on those three colors alone. These three primary colors, again, are red, yellow, and blue, and they're typically the first colors that we learn as children, which is why they're so often used when marketing to kids. Secondary colors. So when you mix two primary colors, you get secondary colors. So red and yellow is orange, yellow and blue is green, and blue and red is purple. So orange, green, and purple are all considered secondary colors. Let's talk about complementary. So complementary colors are opposites on the color wheel. Green is the opposite of red, which is why Christmas feels so natural. Blue is the opposite of orange. Purple is the opposite of yellow. So when complementary colors are used together, they really stand out. And I'm sure you can probably think of a few brands that have used that, like the Lakers come to mind for purple and yellow, right? Only use complementary colors when you're gonna go for high impact. Otherwise, if you don't do it the right way, complementary colors in branding can feel a little bit harsh or obnoxious because they're literally opposite sides of the color wheel. So let's talk about shade, tint, and tone. So shade occurs when you take a color and you start to add black. Tint occurs when you take a color and you start to add white. So it gets the, from the color and then it gets a little bit lighter. And then tone occurs when you add the color gray. Now, it's really helpful to see shade, tint, and tone when you're choosing a color palette because they allow you to see what a color looks like as it gets lighter or darker. So for instance, we might have a color in our color palette that's blue, but we might also put it in a shade and a tint tonal like a exercise because sometimes we might wanna go lighter or darker depending upon if we need to create contrast in that one shade and that one color in our brand colors. So every single color, it communicates a feeling and these feelings is what I'm calling color currency. So when you're thinking about your brand palette, you wanna think about what feelings you're evoking because again, color is designed to sell when used in branding. So white, it communicates space, peacefulness, cleanliness. On the negative side, it can also communicate emptiness. So just make sure that when you're choosing white, you're keeping all of these things in mind. Let's talk about gray. So gray communicates balance and neutrality and then on the negative side, it could possibly also communicate a feeling of being dull <laughs> when not used correctly. Black. So black is sophistication, it's boldness, it's power. And on the opposite side, sometimes it can also tend to communicate sadness as well. So keep that in mind. Yellow. So yellow is energy, brightness, attention. Think of caution signs, right? but yellow can also communicate frustration, so make sure that you keep that in mind when you're using yellow. Orange is happiness, freshness, creativity, but it can also communicate a little bit of caution, kind of like yellow, and sometimes it can be perceived as cost-effective or affordable, <laughs> so keep that in mind if you're using orange in your brand color as well. Red. So red is excitement, passion, power, 
And when you think about Valentine's Day, we always think of the color red, right? But sometimes red can also communicate anger or danger. And then we also have pink. So pink can be joyful, feminine, creative, but on the opposite side, on a brand perspective, it could also communicate a little bit of childishness. <laughs> so keep that in mind too. Purple, purple is wisdom, royalty, think of Prince, <laughs> spirituality, and on the opposite side could be mystery. Blue, so blue can communicate safety, stability, productivity, and on the opposite side, on the negative side, it could also tend to communicate sadness. Teal is just a combination of blue and green, so let's talk about what green is. Green can communicate nature, calmness, safety, and also sometimes green is used to communicate envy. That's where the phrase comes from, I was green with envy. And then finally, brown. So brown can communicate strength, reliability, and comfort, but sometimes it's also used to communicate isolation. Every color communicates a feeling. What feelings do you want your brand to evoke? Choose a color palette that communicates accordingly. So for community influencer, I wanted to evoke a feeling of coastal casual. I was born and raised near the beach, as we talked about in two workshops ago. So I wanted something that was simple, easy, breezy, light, and airy. Second, I wanted my brand to signal all of the following feelings. So peacefulness, happiness, freshness, creativity, safety, stability, productivity, and sophistication. So we started off with a mood board, and then we chose muted shades of orange, blue, yellow, beige, and white. Let me show you what I mean. So we started off a Pinterest board, and we put all of these pictures, right? So it's like coastal casual pictures. And then from these pictures, we created a color palette with these colors. So you can see how the pictures are the mood board. So you start off here. This is an easy, easy thing to do in Pinterest. Just go on Pinterest and just start looking at colors and photos and even maybe sometimes Instagram if you want to and start saving them and start saying like, okay, these are the colors that I'm attracted to. These are the pictures that I'm attracted to. And then from there, you can start to build your color palette really, really easily. So I'm gonna help you choose your brand's color palette. And what you're gonna do is again, you're gonna start a mood board by pinning several photos that really inspire you. Again, Pinterest is perfect. Then you're gonna pull four four colors or less, okay? Four colors or less from that mood board. And then I want you to use those colors consistently in all of your marketing materials and never stray. I cannot stress this enough, you guys, because we look at all of your websites, you ask for help on social media, and we look at all of your stuff, and I can see that sometimes you're choosing red and then orange, and then you're like, oh, I think this pink looks cute. And it's like, no, 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 no. You have to use those four colors because if you don't, then people get confused by your brand. People need to be able to pick you out of a crowd and that's completely impossible to do if they're seeing different colors every single time they see your brand. So inconsistent colors create confusion in the marketplace and a confused customer never ever buys. So pick a few colors and by a few, I mean like as few as possible <laughs> and stick with it. So for your Orange County, we literally just picked orange, black and white. That's it. It's like two variations of orange. We did one orange and then we did a, um, a tonal where we added a little bit of white and that's it. So pick a couple of colors and stick with it. Now let's talk about brand fonts. It's also part of your visual identity. So typography is another way that brands can silently connect, communicate, and convert with design. And typography is the art of styling copy to make it even more compelling so it sells even more. So copy can easily be styled by the use of fonts, spacing, and alignment. There are three modern font types that most brands use today. 
And let's talk about what those are. So number one is serif. So serif has little small embellishments at the end of all the letter strokes, like these little like tails kind of at the end of every letter. The best example of a serif logo would be Tiffany and company. Serif fonts can be used on headlines and they can be used in body copy. So if you're reading a book, like even um, my book, for instance, the font that we chose, the publisher chose was a serif font for reading because we're used to reading that like um, a newspaper is a serif font for the body copy. Okay. The next one is a sans serif. And the way that you can remember this is the word sans, I think it's like Latin. It just means without. So without serif. So sans serif. It has no letter embellishments at all. The best example is Nike. So sans serif, because it's very simple, it's very clean, like you can see that there's no kind of tails at the end of every single letter, you can use this on headlines, subheadlines, body copy, website buttons, logos, and more. So we use a lot of sans serif in our buttons. All the website buttons that we have, we want them to be very simple and clean and easy to read because a button is a massive call to action on a website. So we don't want any confusion uh, about like click here, do this, text me, all those things, right? So every button on our website is a sans serif. Even our logo, the community influencer logo is a sans serif because we want it to be very clear and make a, a really bold statement. Now the third one is scripts. So every letter is connected to another like cursive. So that's kind of what defines a script. So the best example of a script font would be Coca-Cola. Script fonts are best used on headlines and logos, but I would never use a script font on a body copy or like on a button or something like that because we just use scripts just to call things out kind of like a handwritten note. Hey, take a look at this. That's how we use it on our websites and all of our marketing materials. So we use it very, very sparingly. And I would suggest that you do the same. All right. So let's talk about how you can pair all of these fonts together so that you can create a cohesive brand. So the way that you create a font pairing is you create something that includes a headline, a sub headline, and your body copy, okay? So you want three fonts for these three areas. And this would include things like your websites, your business cards, literally anywhere where fonts are allowed. Um, not email because email kind of uses one simple little font, but anything that you can print out or put on a website or digital that you're designing, you're gonna wanna have these three areas. And here's what I mean. So when we created, um, the first iteration of our brand refresh, what we did was we created a sub, what we started off with a headline. So the headline was a serif font and we used Playfair display. That's the font that we used. And you can see it has like the little tails <laughs> on every single letter. And that is a headline, which is a serif font. And we used a 48 point for that. And then we used a 24 point for the sub headline. And we used a sans serif and we used Poppins medium for that one because it's a modern, really cute font. And then as an 18 point font, we used our body copy, which is sans serif, which is also Poppins light. So you can see when you pair these fonts together, the Playfair display is big and it's a serif and it's 48 points and it's a little bit bold. The sub headline is Poppins medium, which is a little bit bold, but it's smaller, about half the size. And then the Poppins light, you wanna use maybe even like a lighter color or um, something to differentiate it from the headline and the sub headline. So this is how you create a font palette. And I wanna let you know that if you don't feel confident enough to choose your own brand fonts, that's okay. We've given you a resource that contains plenty of font combinations to use as inspiration and it's right inside of your workbook. So uh, in once you download the workbook, you'll have a resource in there and we'll send a link out and it'll allow you to look at lots of different font combinations and then you can kind of choose one from there, but you can't really go wrong as long as you're choosing a headline, a sub headline and a body copy, okay? All right, so 
I promise to leave time for Q&A at the end, so go ahead and post your questions now if you have them. But in the meantime, if you want to take a deeper dive into any of the things that I covered today, they're all included in my best-selling book, The Real Real Estate Agent. So anyone who does, I promise that you guys would get a special VIP bonus for doing so. And that is your best year ever. So my team and I are going to help you to create a seven-figure real estate marketing plan so you can have your best year ever. And anyone who buys a copy of the book during launch week is going to have the opportunity to do this with us live. So we're going to jump on a half day call together. We're going to teach you step by step how to design an airtight real estate marketing plan so that you can generate more leads, clients, and referrals. And this is the exact strategy that I teach in my signature program, the Community Influencer Academy, proven by 15,000 plus agents who've graduated before you. And the virtual experience uh, I'm going to do the same thing for you. Even if you are not a CIA member, that's okay. This is for you. If you are a new agent, a seasoned agent, a team leader, a CIA member, a CIA graduate, or any other member of our community. So the way that it's going to work is that the live learning experience is going to be completely free. All you have to do is just grab a copy of my book and that's your ticket. This is gonna be the official textbook that's gonna guide us through the VIP experience together. And it's gonna be sold in all major retailers, but you can purchase the ebook version right now on Amazon for 99 cents, which means that it's a 9.97 value for just $1. So grab your textbook today, then go to communityinfluencer.com slash book to grab your complimentary ticket. All right, so let's go ahead and answer a few questions. If you have them, like I said, go ahead and post those in the chat and stop the screen share. If you have questions, awesome. And if you don't, I'll give you some time back in your day. <laughs> All right, so Jackie Hutch Hutchinson, good morning. Been fan of Aaron's teaching over here too. Thank you, Jackie. Awesome. So good. I love it. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate that. Um, I was curious to see what you would say about orange. Orange is my favorite color. And um, it's like, I don't know. It's so, uh, it's just like so bright and clean. And um, my favorite, like one of the ways that I started off with the, with our brand before I kind of evolved was it was just oranges on a white table. And so it was like orange, green, white, just really organic. I just loved it. It's plus we're in Orange County. So another way that I wanted to evoke, um, referrals <laughs> out of town referrals is to signal the color orange as we say Orange County, right? So, um, branding is really, really powerful when you're using it for, for lots of different things, but color definitely, definitely sells. Let's see. Jenny, when building your mood board, what subject do you search? Uh, so what I would do, Jenny, is I would have like um, a couple of things in mind. So like for ours, we started off with beach, um, surfboards, sand, waves, all of those things. So kind of think about what your community would appreciate. And then from there, I would start to search for keywords in Pinterest or even on Instagram based on those keywords that would be important to your community or one that you identify with. That's how I would start. Purple, red, black, and gray. Purple, red, black, and gray. So purple is a, de is a derivative of red. Yeah, actually, I like that. Um, I would probably choose a little bit if you're going to go with purple, if that's your main color and then red is your, your sub color, what I would do is I would use red sparingly. So I would, I would lead with purple, black, and gray, and then use red for maybe like a button color or, um, a call out color. That's, that's the way that I would choose that one. Robin, if you haven't already, <laughs> um, Kay says, thank you. Bought my book yesterday and I can't wait to get it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kay. Uh, I love your profile picture stylish. I love that. I can tell by your profile picture, just like it says so much about your brand already. So great job. All right. So let's see here. Quick color palette hack for people who have a difficult time. You can go to a paint section of a hardware store and they often have cards with color combinations. Yes. I love that. So, um, when we were choosing, uh, so my husband Howard and I, when we were going through our remodel for this house, 
we actually went to Home Depot and we grabbed a bunch of those color palettes. And so what we choose for our home was white, blue, gold, and brown through wood. So it was like, so every single direction, um, every single decoration in our house is one of those colors. And if you want to instantly um, evoke a professionalism, limit your color palette. <laughs> so every time people come into our house, they're like, oh, we, we love your house, but they don't realize it's because we have a limited color palette. So I'm a gardener. A lot of you guys know that. I even have a limited color palette in my garden. So the only colors that are allowed in my garden are white through roses, green, obviously, because of leaves. Um, and we have a few uh, purple flowers, and then we have yellow and orange because it's like a Mediterranean style house. So everyone's always like, gosh, you, you know, your garden looks so beautiful. And I'm like, it's, th they don't realize it's because I have a very limited, strict color palette. So whenever I see people using like 14 colors, I'm like, oh, it's like, it's such a rookie move, right? So that's why you want to limit your color palette because people can instantly pick it out of the crowd. It's, if you look at any interior designer, that's the first thing they do. They start with a color, a mood board and a color palette, and they do not deviate. They do not add extra colors on that color palette. They stick to it, even if the client is upset about it, because <laughs> it's professional. That's the way you do it. The color is very helpful. I love purple and peach together. The bird of paradise inspired me. Yeah, so um, even in gardening, a lot of gardeners use purple flowers and peach, um, like even creams and beiges. It's just, it's so classy. Like those colors are so classy together. So I love that. Our business name is Sapphire. Is blue too obvious? Can blue, um, can too obvious be a thing? I don't think so because, um, like I said, for us, the for the Your Orange County site, we chose orange and I think that that was just, it was obvious, but I don't, I think it would be weird, right? If we chose blue <laughs> for like an orange count, I just think it would be, I think it would be too weird. So, um, I think that Sapphire is, first of all, that name is amazing. And, uh, the color Sapphire is stunning. Like if you look at Tiffany, their brand color, the Tiffany blue, that's almost like a Sapphire color. So it's going to evoke instant, like feelings of almost kind of like luxury and just, and it doesn't have to be high end luxury. It can, it can just be feelings of just really powerful, but yet soft. It's weird. Like Sapphire is such a beautiful color, but think of Tiffany and think of the colors that kind of are evoked when you think of Tiffany blue. Uh, my company XP uses orange, blue, black, white, and then some tones of tints in those. Yes. Okay. Um, we were with EXP for a while and Jiminy Christmas, <laughs> like those colors are completely obnoxious. So, uh, what we did was we tried to use the black and white versions. So sometimes they'll have like, a if you're, if your broker uses obnoxious <laughs> colors, then you just need to use the grayed out versions of all of their logos if they allow you to do so. So we're with K. We went back to KW, and KW has um, it's kind of like a red and white, which is it's cl it's classy, but it's still kind of a little bit obnoxious if our brand color is orange. But um, try to use the the gray versions if you can. Even the EXP logo, it's not very um, sophisticated. <laughs> so um, I had a hard time with that. I'm just gonna be real. Um, Robin says, um, I love pops of color, but the classic palette, black, sophisticated, white, clean, modern gray. How do I incorporate a pop of color? Yeah. So Robin, if you want to do the purple, like that would be perfect. So you could do your color palette would basically be black and white. And then maybe your button colors are purple or your, um, your call outs, your backgrounds can be like variations of purple. So that's the way that I would do that. If you want to leave red off, you can totally do that and just stick with purple, white, and black. I think that would be awesome. Um, can you give us a link to the font pairing guide? I think, um, yeah, if my team, if you guys, if someone uh, can find that in the, the, the workbook and then just link it in the comments, that would be great. I think Jenny's in the Facebook group. 
think. Um, Jackie, do you mainly stick to three colors? When is it okay to use shade, tint, and tone with those three main colors? Yeah, okay, so I like to stick... Okay, so if you're new to this, pick three colors or two colors and call it a day. But if you are creative or artistic or have some sort of staging or interior design background, then you might be able to, to get away with more. So like in our new rebrand palette, um, I think we have eight colors, but it's only because we do so many designs and slides and all of those things. And so what I've noticed is like, we really only have three colors, which is like white, orange, and blue but then we have variations of those used on, like I said, shade and tint and tone. So for instance, the main color is orange, but then we've added white to get like a sand color, right? So that's still orange. It's just used as a shade at that point. So um, that's the way that you can do it. And then I would say, you can have as many variations of, of shade uh, of shade and tone as you want. Actually, no, I would say of tint and tone as you want. So you can add black or white, right? And whatever looks good to your eye is what I would go with. But basically what you see, like even if you see, look at like our website and stuff like that, you can see that there's like oranges and then there's like um, a lighter one. There might be blue, a lighter blue. Like, so you can kind of just play with that. That is a lot more classy than having like 14 different colors, if that makes sense. Um, I'm a foodie and would love to showcase a lot of coffee shops, pastries, pizza, salad. Yeah. It, um, I'm thinking if colors that evoke those things. Yeah. So like <clears throat> what I would do is I would start to build a Pinterest board based on those colors. The ones that kind of, um, come immediately to me are, you'll notice that when you look at a lot of those fo like food photos, go through Instagram and start looking at chefs, look at how they post there. Cause when you're doing food photography, they have a very specific way that they take those photos. And what they do is they do everything really high contrast. And if you're in Canva, Canva, and even your iPhone, they have contrast settings. So you can do, um, a little bit higher contrast. And a lot of those colors are very earthy, right? Cause our food comes fresh food anyway, <laughs> comes from the garden. So lots of like greens, deep, deep reds, like, you know, burgundies, those types of things. Some, a little bit of orange, especially if you're using like an Italian uh, food palette. So think about it like that, but just go on Instagram, follow a few chefs and just see what inspires you and just kind of start to collect some, some ideas there. Um, okay. Yeah. Awesome. I love that. Um, yeah. Also, you can upload a photo to Canva and they'll give you colors on the left side of the screen. Yeah. We, um, if you're a member, we have a, um, we have a tool in the membership where you can s pop a photo in and then it'll give you your brand colors automatically. So if you don't know how to access that, it's in one of the bonuses. Uh, if you don't know how to access that, then, um, just reach out to our, to my team at hello at communityinfluencer.com. They can show you where it is. Limited color palette makes sense. Yeah. It, it's weird. Like it, it doesn't make, it feels weird to kind of limit yourself. But again, if you talk to any stylists, if you talk to photographers, if you talk to interior designers, home stagers, and even, um, architects and, uh, landscape designers, they will all tell you, you have to limit your palette. You have to. Um, it's Isaiah from Foundations of Sapphires. Nice. Thanks. Awesome, Isaiah. Thank you so much. Uh, great information to help present ourselves professionally and help us from making rookie mistakes. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's like, a because I, like I said, I'm, I'm an artist, so I'm like really passionate about it, but I see it happening all the time. So I was like, Hey, we need to create a branding course like ASAP, especially because like I said, we were looking at our members, like even my husband did it. Sorry to call you out, Howard. Like, he's like, he just, so our colors are orange. We talked about it, right? And he's like, well, I just did purple because I thought it was cool. And I was like, no, we can't. Like, it was on social media. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like, you have to, to use the same colors over and over because it's a brand. Like, you have to 
make sure that you are using the brand colors. <laughs> so uh, don't just like pick colors out of a hat. Use the same colors so people can identify your brand. Really, really easy. And also, we teach you guys to be active on every platform and even active in your um, your communities, right? So they need to be able to pick your brand, not only just off the web or off of Instagram, but off of your open house signs, your listing signs, your business cards, like your ads everywhere, right? When they see your brand, they should know who you are and, and be familiar with it. So awesome. You're welcome, Jenny. Thank you. What about the color palette of vibrant pink, medium gray, tan, and orange red? So I will tell you that pink and gray go together very well. Pink, gray, and black are like if you look, think about um, think about the Mac store. <laughs> like when you walk into the mall, they use a lot of black. Their main color is black, and then they also use white, and they use pink and like pops of color, teal, purple, all those things. So if you think about that, that works really, really well. I don't know if you can put orange and red in there because if you think about like what is pink, um. Pink is, it's a shade of red, but it incorporates blue. So pink is a little bit cool and orange red is, is warm. So it's on opposite sides of the, so it doesn't always work that way. So you might want to think about maybe pink and purple or pink and blue, but I think pink, black, gray, and white would be fire. Um, are there any colors to stay away from? Some that are, that are outdated. That's a really good question. I don't think that it's the color that makes you outdated as much as your design and your fonts. So, um, I think it's not a, yeah, no, I w I wouldn't say it's, I wouldn't say outdated. What I would say though is like, um, cheap, <laughs> Like if you use the wrong colors, you're going to evoke like a discount brand. <laughs> like, and, um, there's a time and a place for discount brands. I just don't know if it's in real estate and I don't think that you want to evoke that. So I wouldn't worry about being outdated with color as much as I would worry about, um, putting the wrong colors together to evoke kind of like a, a discount feel. Um, there was, so I lived in, um, before we moved here, there was a, an agent who used lime green and yellow, which, um, I would never choose, <laughs> but I kid you not, you guys, he did open houses every single weekend and he would put like, I don't know, 40 flags and flyers and every, and this was before I became a, um, a real estate agent. Every time through the weekend, we would see his yellow and green. And I like, it was so obnoxious, but let me tell you, when I saw that, I knew I'm like, Oh, he's holding another open house. Like it's him. I know exactly who it is. And so that's the thing is like, I don't think that if you're worried about getting it wrong, it, it, you're much, I would worry about, um, blending in more than getting it wrong is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so he can always kind of like class up his colors through his fonts and his design and all those things. But, um, cause it did look a little bit outdated, like some of the stuff that he used, but I'm telling you like those colors as obnoxious as they were, cause they were so bright. Like, I mean, it worked. And when I was in, um, my old community, we would use, I, I had white signs and I had orange flags, like those pendant flags. And I would put out signs everywhere to do open houses and everybody would come in the open house and be like, oh, you're here. Like they knew exactly who I was. So don't be afraid to use like pops of color, but um, don't worry about being outdated. Worry about blending in. That's the death of a brand. All right. So, so much great info. I have homework ahead. This is exciting. Yeah. Colors, colors are very exciting and um, don't be afraid. Just start to to, to think about it. It's not something you guys, you don't have to do it right now in this second, but I want to give you guys, I want to empower you so that when you are ready to do your brand, that you can, um, have all of the, the tools that you need to be able to work with a designer or do it yourself or whatever you need so that that way you guys can, can create a brand that 
is feels right to you. It's better to know the information than not. Um, what about various shades of green with um, purple with shades of green? I think um, purple and green can go together. If you think about where you've seen that in real life. So the first thing that comes to me is, uh, I told you I'm a gardener, so we do a lot of, like we have um, eggplant. And so it's a dark, rich purple with green. And that would actually work very well. But I don't know if you could choose like Prince purple (laughs) and green. I don't know if that would work. But if you choose like a dark, rich purple, that actually might be really, really nice. The knowledge of pink being immature is disappointing. I know my colors are hot pink and teal and white and black. What do you think? I don't think it's immature or um, childish if you use it correctly. I think that you can evoke a feeling of being childish if you use the wrong fonts and if you use the wrong designs. But I have seen a lot of people use those exact colors and pull it off flawlessly. I think that the way that you have to do it is you have to lead with pink and then probably just use teal as an accent color and use white and black to create lots of space. So lots of white backgrounds, lots of black text, and I think you're going to be fine, Zodi. Um, sapphire and pink grapefruit looks like a classy combination of the sap- Yes, it does. Yes, I agree with that 100%. Okay, so what are the discount colors you mentioned? Okay, so um, one of the examples that I gave before was like, like the yellow and green. So even though he caught my attention every single weekend, it signals a kind of a, a discount feel. <laughs> like, um, so just be, if you're going to go bold, the point is if you're going to go bold, that's okay. But just make sure that you use classy fonts and use classy designs. Um, if you're a member, we provide all of this for you. So you can't really go wrong. Um, my color is DF128. So yeah, like, okay, Jenny, first of all, I love the fact that you put your hex code in there because, um, that tells me so much about you. (laughs) I love that. It's raspberry, deep pink, black, and sepia brown. Oh, that's, that's amazing. We'll consider adding some variations, but love my colors and I've totally defined my, yes, yes. Yeah, exactly. So like, even if you're doing your brand font, um, sorry, your, uh, your photo shoot. So like we, we did a a photo shoot for our rebrand that's coming up, um, two, two or three weeks ago. And all of the, the colors that I chose were all colors. Like all of the outfits that I chose were all colors from our new brand. So yeah, that's awesome. We have too much lime green branding in Idaho. (laughs) Yeah. And you might notice that too. Like if you have, um, a specific color in your community, that's kind of overused, Keep that in mind too. And um, maybe you can do something like contrasting to stand out. Lavender and green I often see in spas. Absolutely. And spas take their color inspiration from nature, right? So you can use a lot of really calming colors to evoke that. And that usually is going to be found in nature. I love that you noticed that. Yeah. Muted in shade. Awesome. So I think that's it. I think that's all of the comments. Um that we have for today. So we got through all of them and I'm so glad that you guys are here. So once again, um, thank you so much. This concludes the branding boot camp. If you are a member, we're going to put all of these into the member portal. It's just going to be titled, um, branding boot camp in the member portal and all the replays are going to be there for you. And that's it. Thank you guys so much. If you would like to become a member community influencer academy.com. And I would love to, train you and teach you all things marketing because this is what I do. I love, I love my job. I love it. All right, cool. Talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much for being here. Bye.